now that you have a fair understanding, hopefully, of closures, I'm going to talk about one problem that can get really puzzling unless you really know what's going on with closures. This was actually a problem that I faced before I really understood closures. I was learning JavaScript, I was trying out something, and I encountered this problem. And uh, this is what led to me understanding closures, trying to find out what was going on here. And that's how I started learning closures. And, you know, finally, I figured that out. But uh, this is something that would make sense only if you really get closures. So let me demonstrate what I mean by this. Now, let's say I have a var i and then for i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. I'm basically creating a for loop here which executes 10 times. And um, I'm going to do console.log of i. Now, what would happen if i were to execute this? This should basically print i 10 times, right? So it starts from 0, goes all the way to 9, so it should print 0 to 9. There's, there are 10 console.logs which print i 0 to 9. So if i were to reload and run, there you see 0 to 9 gets printed. But now let's say I want to use the set timeout feature. I don't want to print console.log of i directly. I want to wait for a second before I print the value of all these things, so 0 to 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a set. I'm going to call set timeout. And uh, it takes two parameters, right? The first one is a function. Second one is the millisecond. So let me create this as a separate function. var print equals this function. All right, and I do a send print. I'm creating this function over here and then passing it here. So here is i, which is a simple variable. And now I have this print, which is a function, which prints i. And now here for i equals 0 to 10 to 9, really. I say set timeout of print and one second. So it's going to wait for one second before it prints it for each iteration. Now, if I were to execute this, it should basically print 0 to 9 as we've seen before, but it should print after one second, right? Well, let's see. If I were to run this, you see what happens? It's printing 10, 10 times. It's not printing 0 to 9. It should have printed. I did wait for a second, though. You saw I didn't get this output immediately. I waited for a second, and then it printed 10, 10 times, which is not really what we wanted. If I had not done the set timeout, if I had just called print, what would have happened? Let's say I clear this out, and I reload and run. It prints 0 to 9. Works just like it should. But now what is the problem with this? I'm doing set timeout. It is not printing 0 to 9. It's printing 10 all at once. What's going on here? So the problem becomes obvious when you look at where the variables are created and what the closures are. Let me put this back to calling print as before. Okay, This is the print uh, that worked. And we were able to see 0 to 9. Now let's trace through what's happening here. There is a variable i when the, when the code executes very first line creates a variable called i. There is one variable called i. And now there is a print function, which does console.log of i. So i is referring to this i here, because that's the scope. It doesn't have a variable called i inside the function. So it goes one level up and accesses i globally. Now I am looping through 0 to 9, and I'm changing the value of i each time, and I'm printing it. So the first iteration, i becomes 0, and it says, print i. Now it goes here, executes this line, print 0. Now the second iteration, i becomes 1, it calls print, and it executes this. The i is now 1, it prints 1, and so on. It goes all the way to 9, and it prints it. But now what happens if I move, change it to this one, which is a set timeout? Let's trace through this again. Now here, when this executes, let's, let me execute this and show that this prints 10, 10 times. Right? So you see, it prints 10, 10 times. I'm going to clear this and execute it again. It waits for a second and prints 10, 10 times. Let's trace through this flow. Line 1 executes. There is a variable called i. There is one variable called i that gets 
declared. And now there is print, which has a function, console.log of i. And uh, thanks to Clojure, there it remembers what this i is, right? This is referring to the global. So now here is the for loop. i is assigned the value 0. And now there is a function called set timeout that is called with two arguments, print and 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. So print here has a reference to this i. There is only one copy of i here, right? So this print is referring to this copy of i. And now set timeout says, OK, I got this print object and I've got 1000 milliseconds. I'm going to hold on to this object and execute this object, function object, after one second. Now it's going to execute the second iteration of the loop. i is now changed to 1. OK, now it, you again call set timeout with the same object and 1000 milliseconds. Now set timeout says, OK, I got it. I've got the same print object. I need to execute this function after one second. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this thing twice. It's going to go again. I equals to set timeout gets the same object. So it's basically you're basically calling set timeout with the same object reference. This function, it's the same object that gets sent to set timeout with the value uh, one second, right? So what it does is it it has this multiple calls registered. Set timeout has multiple calls registered. Now it goes, it loops through, it loops all the way to nine. I becomes 10 when the last I plus plus is called and it checks this condition. I is less than 10, no. So it does not call set timeout. It exits the for loop and at this point of time, I contains the value of 10. And now set timeout is holding on to those 10 calls. It hasn't executed it yet because one second hasn't elapsed. Now it waits for a second and now it says, okay, I need to get this print object and execute this. Now it gets that first call print object. Now print object is this function object. And it is pointing to i, which is this one instance of i that got created when this function executed, when line one executed. Now what is the value of that's contained in this i? The value is 10 because you remember the for loop executed and the for loop exited when i was holding the value of 10. So i contains the value of 10. So when set timeout finally gets to print, executing this print, i has the value of 10, so it prints 10 over here, and it gets to the next thing, and it's, it is still 10, it prints 10. So it keeps doing this, it executes print 10 times, but when the first print gets called, and even all of those prints get called, the value of i is 10. So that's the reason why it prints 10, 10 times, okay? So set timeout basically queues up the execution of print after a second, but then it's all pointing to the same value of i, and i at that point of time is going to contain the value of 10 because it would have exited this for loop, and that's the reason why 10 gets printed 10 times. This was a particularly tricky one for me to understand, and once I understood closures, or once I understood that this is asynchronous, the execution of this print function is after a second. Once I understood those two concepts, it did make sense. Now the question is, how do you prevent this from happening? Let's say I want to print 0 to 9, but I want it after a second. How do I get this to work? We'll look at that in the next video.